Welcome back to Physical Science 101. We're continuing with Unit 6, Light, and we're in the process of talking about the interaction of light with matter. In this lesson specifically, we're going to talk about the transmission of light through matter. We're going to talk about what happens when light passes through matter. And what happens when light passes through matter is it slows down from its speed of 300 million meters per second. We, the exact amount by which it slows down, we measure with something called the index of refraction. The index of refraction, we give a symbol of n, so a lowercase n, and n is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in a particular material. So n is equal to c for the speed of light in a vacuum divided by v, which is the speed of light in a particular material. So each material will have its own index of refraction. And you can see a table here that gives the index of refraction for several different types of material. So for example, in glass, the index of refraction is 1.5. So that tells us that the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in glass is 1.5. And notice that there's no units because we have a speed divided by a speed. So in the index of refraction is a pure number. Now from this, we could calculate the speed of light in glass or in any type of matter by just solving our equation for V. And when we do that, we get that V, the speed of light in matter, is equal to C, the speed of light in vacuum, divided by N, the index of refraction. So the speed of light in glass, for example, will be 300 million meters per second divided by 1.5, which is the index of refraction of glass. One more thing to notice about this table is, let's take a look at the last two entries, air. The first thing that you see there is that the index of refraction of air is very close to 1. It's 1.00 something. And so what that says is that, the, is that light travels through air almost as fast as it does through a vacuum. The other thing to see, however, is that the index of refraction does depend on the speed of the air. The index of refraction of light in warm air, the 30 degree air, is smaller than the index of refraction of light in cold air, the zero degree air. So what that means is that light travels faster in warm air than it does in cold air. And that's going to be important in a moment. Now why do we call this the index of refraction? Well, refraction is the bending of light due to changes in speed. So whenever light changes its speed, it will bend. And this usually happens at the change between one type of material and the other. So for example, from air to glass or air to water, we will see a change in the speed of light and the path of the light will bend. Let's see why that is. So let's say I have a surface here I'll draw a surface here, and this is air, and this is glass. And in air, we'll say that light travels fast. It doesn't matter exactly how fast. And in glass, uh, light travels slower. So fast and slow. So if I have a beam of light, I'm going to draw a beam of light coming in like this. Now, I'm going to use my marker to symbolize the beam of light coming in. So I have the beam of light coming in. It's moving in air. So both sides of the beam of light are moving at the same speed. But now, when this side of the light encounters the glass, this side will slow down and move more slowly than this side. So as the air comes in, this side will drag until this side reaches the air and the, uh, then the light will have turned. 
So the light light's path will have turned. So once again, I'm coming in, the bottom side encounters the glass first and starts to drag, which allows the top side to move faster, which turns the light until this one gets this side gets in the glass as well. And now the light is moving at a slower speed in a different direction. So the light path has been broken by this transition from air to glass. So that is uh, that the word refraction means breaking. So the path of the light has been broken. So instead of moving in a straight line, the path of light has been broken and the, path, and the light has changed its direction. So when, when light moves from a fast medium to a slow medium, it will turn in one direction. And now let's get to the other side of the glass. So we'll go back from glass to air, fast again. Now in this case, this side will speed up again and it will turn, it will move faster than this side. So the light path will turn the other way. And so the light path will bend again. Okay, so the light bends in one direction, bends in one direction when the light hits the glass and then bends in the other direction when the light leaves the glass. So that is why light changes its path when it goes from one medium to another, or in other words, when the speed of the light changes. So usually we think of light traveling in straight lines. Well, that, do, that is not the case when it encounters a change in speed. When light encounters a change in speed, the path of the light changes. Let me do another demonstration of that for you. Okay, here is a simulation about what I was talking about. Um, we have a light source and you can see waves of light, electromagnetic waves coming out of the light and the light encounters a, a change between air at the top and water at the bottom. And so the bottom edge of the light encounters the water first and you can see that it drags and sl travels slower than the top. So there's this kink and the effect of that dragging and the kink is to actually change the path of the light. So instead of going straight through like this, the fact that the, we have the, the boundary from air to water here actually turns the light. Now we can make that go the other way. Let me make the bottom air as well. So if we make the bottom air as well, then there's no boundary, no kink, and so the light goes straight through. But now I'm gonna turn the top into water. So now we have a light ray going from air, I'm um, going from water into air. Okay, so we have, once again, we have waves of light coming down. Now they're encountering, now they're encountering the uh, change from water to air. The light travels more slowly in water than it does in air. So the bottom edge uh, actually speeds up before the top edge does. So the bottom edge speeds up as it goes from water into air and that causes the bottom to speed up, gives, gives us this kink right about here and the effect of that is to turn the light beam the other way. Okay, so the light beam is now being kinked in this direction instead of going straight through. Okay, so that is refraction at a boundary. Now let's look at what happens when we have a prism. Okay, so here we have a white light shining on a prism. 
and what we see is when the light goes from the air into the glass of the prism, it is kinked, it is bent, it is refracted. And when the light goes from the glass into the air again, it's bent again. Now the net effect of this is both times the light is bent towards the base of the pyramid. So the, so the light is bent towards the base of the pyramid and it's bent towards the base of the pyramid overall. So these two refractions here have the effect that when we go through the pyramid that the light is bent overall towards the base of the pyramid. That's going to be very important when we talk about lenses later. The light is bent to the thicker side of the uh, prism. Now notice that uh, the light also is separated into its colors. The red is refracted less than the purple. So, so you see here that the red is bent, the purple is bent, but the red is bent less. That is because the index of refraction of glass uh, depends on wavelength. There is a higher index of refraction for purple than there is for red. So that is why a prism will separate uh, light into its colors. That's because refraction in glass is wavelength dependent. With stronger, uh, stronger refraction for violet than for red. Now just for fun, let me throw, let me take uh, this pyramid away and I'm going to have a circle that represents a drop of water. And let me, uh, oh, make that uh, water. There we go. Okay. So when I have light shining through water, this could be light from the sun shining through uh, a droplet of water in the air. And if I catch it just right, you can see that the same thing happens. We have refraction of the sunlight through the water. You can maybe just barely make out that, um, that the white light from the sun is separated out into red on top and blue on bottom. So this, uh, this, is a, this effect is a halo. Um, Sometimes you'll see a halo around the sun. That is this effect. It's the, it's the light from the sun shining through a droplet of water. Now, if I add in reflections, we can actually make, you can actually see a rainbow. So let me change the angles just a little bit. Let me, okay, there we go. So we can see the process that gives us a rainbow right here. We have light from the sun that goes into a droplet of water in the air. It refracts. It actually reflects on the back of the light, uh, of the uh, water droplet, and then refracts again. And it's very faint but you should be able to see that we have a separation of light into its colors again. So to see this rainbow, you would actually have to be looking, you would actually have, this, have to have the sun to your back. So the light from the sun is coming from left to right. So uh, to see this, you would actually have to be looking away from the sun. So when there's water droplets in the sky uh, and the sun is behind you, uh, you might be able to see a rainbow. Now, we could also, I could also maybe make a double rainbow. Sometimes you'll see a double rainbow. Let's see if I can get that worked out real quick. And there it is. Okay. So what I have here is I have the light from the sun refracting into the water droplet, reflecting twice, and then refracting out. And you can see that the light is once again broken up into its spectrum. And uh, 
a couple things to notice here. One is that this light is coming in at a much higher angle. So you have to look higher in the sky to see the second rainbow. So the second rainbow is higher in the sky. It's at a higher angle. You have to look up at a higher angle uh, to see the second rainbow. And also the colors are reversed. This one has red on top and blue on the bottom. Whereas the regular rainbow, we'll look at that again, was opposite. This one has red on the bottom and violet on the top. So the primary rainbow has the colors in one way, the secondary rainbow has the colors in the other way. And uh, this little demonstration shows you why that is. Now an interesting effect of refraction that we often see here in Louisiana are mirages on hot roads. Here we have a picture of a car and what appears to be a pool of water, and we see the car apparently reflected in that pool of water. Well, there's no pool of water there. This is not reflection. This is actually a mirage due to refraction. Remember that air travels faster in hot air than it does in cool air. So the as the light from the car, the light that is diffusely reflected from the car, comes towards us, it is actually refracted uh, upwards towards us. Let me draw a diagram. Here we have the road, and I'm just going to draw a little line here. And this is, uh, the air is hot here and cool up here, and this is the road. Okay, so let's say the car, let's say a part of the car is right here. Okay, and some light from the sun diffusely refracts, uh, diffusely reflects off of it. And one beam of light comes down like this. Okay, so part of the diffusely uh, reflected light comes downwards. Well, what happens what happens is that the part of the light that is in the hot air will move faster than the part of the light that's in the cool air. So that light will actually follow a path like this. Okay, so the light will bend down and back up because the light that is closer to the road moves faster than the light that is in the cool air. So a person standing here, a person standing here actually sees the light coming upwards to him. That is the lower part of the car. That is the, the, the upside down car mirage. Now some of the light will also travel directly to the person. So the person can actually see the car in two different directions. That's why we see two images of the car. We see the light traveling directly to our eye, but we also see the light that is refracted and coming to us from a much lower angle. So if I were the person looking at the car, I would see the car in that direction. That's the light coming directly towards me, but I would also see light coming up at me. So I can see the car in that direction and I can see the mirage of the car in that direction. Now, what is all the water? Well, that's the sky. So once again, the person can see the sky in two different directions. The person can see the sky by looking up at the sky, but the person can also see the sky by looking down at the mirage of the sky, at the, at the light that has been refracted up and comes to the person from underneath. So when you see a mirage on the road, when you see water, what appears to be water on the road, what you're actually seeing is the sky being refracted back to you by the hot air on the surface of the hot road. Okay, let's answer some questions. The first question is, what is the speed of light while traveling through A, water, and B, ice? For this, you will have to go back to the table of the index of refraction 
and find the index of refraction of water and the index of refraction of ice. So please pause and work on that. And when you have an answer, hit play and I'll work through it with you. Okay, our expression for the speed of light in a material is the speed of light in vacuum divided by the index of refraction. So for water, we have the speed is C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by N, which for water is 1.33. So if you looked on your table for the N for water, you should have found 1.33. So that tells us that the speed of light in water is 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.33, and that would be 2.33. 26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so light in water travels slightly faster, um, <laughs> slightly slower. Light in water travels slightly slower than it does in a vacuum. It travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum and 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in water. Now how about ice? We have the same expression, V is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by the index of refraction for ice, which from the table is 1.31, that is a 3, 1.31. So in this case, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.31 is 2.29 uh, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So what you can see is because the index of refraction of ice is slightly smaller than the index of refraction for water, the light actually travels slightly faster, 2.29 in ice, compared to water, uh, 2.26. So a smaller index of refraction means a faster speed. A larger index of refraction means a smaller speed. Here's another question. Light travels through a transparent substance at 2.2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What could that substance be? In this case, you have to calculate the index of refraction and look on your table and decide what substance that could be. So please pause and do that, and when you're ready, please hit play again. So in this case, we know the speed of light, we know that, and we know the speed of light in the material, and those two are equal to our index of refraction. So we can calculate 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 2.2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second to get our index of refraction. And that tells us that our index of refraction is 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.2 times 10 to the 8 is 1.36. So 1.36 and no units because meters per second cancels out meters per second. 1.36 is our index of refraction. So if we go back to our table, look at what that could be. One thing that has an index of refraction 
is ethyl alcohol. And so what that could be is it could be ethyl alcohol. Now, could there be other substances that have the same index of refraction? Yes, but they're not on our table. The only thing on our table is ethyl alcohol. So what we can say is one thing that that could be is ethyl alcohol. Now for some multiple choice questions. The first question is, the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a transparent material is called the A, index of deflection, B, index of reflection, C, index of refraction, or D, index of diffusion. Pause, think about it, come down on a definite answer, and when you do have an answer, please hit play. The correct answer is index of refraction, C. That is our definition of index of refraction, the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in a transparent material is C, the index of refraction. Another question, refraction of light happens when light undergoes A, reflection from a surface, B, a change of speed between two transparent materials, C, movement through a critical angle, or D, a 90 degree angle of incidence. Once again, please pause, think about it, come down on an answer, and when you have a definite answer, please hit play. The correct answer is that refraction of light happens when light undergoes B, a change of speed between two transparent materials. It is the change of speed that causes refraction to happen, or, it's, or in other words, it's the change in speed that causes light to change its path. So refraction of light happens when light undergoes B, a change of speed between two transparent materials. Now here's another question for you to think about. A pencil is placed in a glass of water. The pencil appears to be bent. This is an example of A, reflection, B, refraction, C, dispersion, or D, polarization. Now think about it. Please pause and think about it. And when you have an answer, please hit play. Okay, the correct answer here is B, refraction. Now why is that? Well, it's the same as the mirage. When we have the pencil in the glass of water, light shines on the pencil, and the light goes out from the pencil in all different directions. Now, in order for us to see the light, the light has to travel from the water to the air through which we see the pencil. And when that happens, the light bends. And when the light bends, it appears to come from somewhere other than where it originated. So the part of the pencil that is out of the glass of water, the part of the pencil is in the air, we see its true position, but the part of the pencil that's in the water, we see it in a different position. Just as if we could just as we could see the car in the mirage twice. We saw the car where it really is, but we also saw the car apparently underneath the road. So that is why a pencil appears to be bent in a glass of water. The light from the part of the pencil that's in the water comes at us from a different direction than the true direction towards the pencil. So the reason the pencil appears to be bent is B, refraction. Here's another question. A prism separates the color of sunlight into a spectrum because 
A, each wavelength of light has a different index of refraction in glass. B, each wavelength of light reflects at a different angle on glass. C, each wavelength of light is absorbed differently by glass. Or D, the prism is emitting thermal radiation. Okay, please pause, think about it, come down on, on a definite answer. And once you have an answer, hit play, and I will talk you through this. The correct answer is A. Each wavelength of light has a different index of refraction in glass. Okay, why did the prism separate the light into different colors? The reason is because each color was bent differently. So when, the, when each ray of light went through the prism, each ray of light was bent differently. Each, each different color of light was bent differently. Uh, and that is because each wave, each color of light has a different index of refraction. And how do we distinguish the colors of light? We distinguish them by their wavelengths. So the correct answer is a prism separates the colors of sunlight into a spectrum because each wavelength of light has a different index of refraction in the glass. Here's another question. A mirage is the result of light being A, reflected, B, refracted, C, absorbed, or D, bounced around a lot. Okay, please think about it, and when you're ready, hit play. Okay, the correct answer is that a mirage is a result of light being refracted. Remember that the source of the mirage was the fact that light travels faster in hot air than in cool air. So when the air was warmer near the surface of the road, the light was bent or refracted by traveling faster through the hot air. So a mirage is a result of B, light refracting. And here's our final question. Light interacts with matter by which process? A, absorption, B, reflection, C, transmission, or D, all of the above? Please think about it, come down on an answer, pause, and when you're ready, hit play. The correct answer is all of the above. We have talked about all of these different processes of light. Light can be absorbed by matter, light can be reflected by matter, light can be transmitted through matter. So all of these are important processes by which light interacts with matter. So the correct answer is D, all of the above. So we have talked about the interaction of light with matter. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about optics which is how we manipulate light using lenses and also how we can see things, how our eye works. We're gonna talk about that in the next lesson. Until then, think science.